Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Midday Weather Outlook for the Southern Region, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We begin first with a look back over the last 30 days of total accumulated precipitation. And I'm sure your eye is drawn right there to the bullseye over parts of the southeast and mid-south, where there's a large section of our country in through here that has averaged well over 8 inches of rainfall. In fact, getting into the heart of this, if you go from parts of Mississippi over through Alabama, Georgia, cutting back up into Tennessee and western parts of North and South Carolina, we are talking about a pretty substantial section here of the country that has seen over 10 inches with pockets in there over 15 and up to 20 inches. While we still have drought sitting in parts of southern Texas and over our four corner states, that is not the case here in the southeastern part of the U.S. And with the next system that's coming through next week, we're going to be adding more to this in the near term. But I want to be talking to you about a longer term pattern change in this video, so sit tight. Here's what's coming out of that system next week. So this is total accumulated precipitation from the European model, taking us all the way out to next Friday morning. And with the system that is emerging from parts of central and in eastern Texas all the way over to the Carolinas, we are expecting another widespread one to three inch rainfall event with some locally heavier rains due to some thunderstorm activity. Uh, most significant thing you need to know about this map though right now, besides that rainfall, was that earlier in the week, um, and I'll explain why in just a few moments, the heaviest rainfall bands were a little bit farther to the north inside the oval I just drew here. But there's been a south and southeastward shift in the total uh, precipitation map here. And I'm going to explain to you why in just a few moments. But before we get there, the Storm Prediction Center is still, again, watching the same region we've been discussing for the potential for some severe weather. I do have some uh, important news, though, about that severe weather. Uh, there have been some uh, shifts in the overall flow of the upper levels of the atmosphere, which may shrink the total area over which I was concerned about about severe weather, and it may also um, maybe reduce some of the impacts. And I'll explain to you what I mean in just a few moments. In the near term, though, our all hazards weather map, when the, we looked, read through the hydrologic output uh, information here in this part of where the Mississippi and the, uh, excuse me, Missouri and the Ohio rivers come together, and they're just saying that we have a heightened flood threat, not only in the near term, but in the long term as well here. South of there, we still have lots of rivers in flood stage. You can see the, the river they're kind of shaded in showing you which ones are reporting flood stage right now over in like the Cumberland Plateau getting into the uh, Appalachian Mountains we are going to be watching out for some very slick roads today as a quick hitting little clipper on the back side of the overall trough that's sitting over the northeast comes through and puts down a little bit of snow maybe an inch or two and we're still dealing with in southern Georgia northern Florida uh, risk of frost this morning and that's because temperatures down there uh, are forecast to get into the upper 20s so this is a pretty chilly morning for much of us across our southern region here uh, stretching from you know temperatures in the low 20s in parts of the panhandles and also in the mid to upper 20s stretching all the way to, um, to to North Carolina. But we do have some change coming in this temperature forecast and it's going to be significant. But it's going to be after the weekend. So let's go ahead and talk about what's going on uh, throughout the next uh, you know 60 hours or so in terms of precip. What I'm about to animate for you, just keep an eye right here. This is the little clipper on the back side of the deeper trough sitting here over the north uh, uh, east. And you can just see that throughout this afternoon and this evening, got some light snow moving through southern Illinois into Kentucky. Uh, and it's pushing first, the first wave coming late this morning, right over, like I said, the Cumberland Plateau hitting the Appalachian Mountains. So that then could manifest itself in some light showers that move through parts of, um, you know, G Georgia, maybe even to Alabama and to South Carolina. And then we could see right in here some heavier rainfall that moves into temporarily, very quickly, through parts of North Carolina. But after that, as we work through the weekend, it's, it's a relatively dry weekend. What we're watching is actually now sitting over here, and we need to talk about that. Before we get there, though, take a look at these temperatures. These are just temperature anomalies every six hours. So it kind of just shows us the flow of the cooler weather. So we're broadly 10 to 15 degrees cooler than average here uh, across our southern region to start off Friday morning. But let me just step you back there. If we watch through the rest of the day, getting into uh, Friday evening, excuse me, uh, we can see still hanging on to a 5 to 10 degree cool bias. As we work our way into Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, and Saturday evening, we start to see the cooler air finally push off the coast. And look at the warmth resurging here uh, coming into parts of the southern plains. So this is now Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon and evening, getting into Monday morning. Now look at the switch we've got getting into Monday night, Tuesday morning, 
getting out into early next week. And that is because a deeper trough is tucking in here and it's going to pull a lot of warmth out of the Gulf. So we're going to go from 10 to 15 degrees cooler than average now to starting off our next week, 10 to 15 degrees above average uh, with this next system that's rolling through. So let me show you the most important changes. Okay, this is a snapshot next Tuesday morning of the upper level flow pattern, troughs and ridges. And what I'm most concerned about, okay, here's our coldest anchor. Here is one trough here, and the second one is sitting here. And can you see there's closed isobars, or iso heights in this case, around that uh, low that's sitting over there of the Baja. Now what that's doing is, if you could just imagine, the wind flow is actually coming clear around like this, while the flow in the atmosphere here is doing something like that. So what that's going to do is this is going to slow down the cutoff low over the Baja and let the, the trough that's here over the Central Plains advance quicker. Now we know that this is going to produce a low pressure system here that's going to sneak over into parts of eastern Canada. And it's going to leave a frontal boundary here on which this cutoff low is going to eventually follow. But the two things decoupling from one another... Okay, the northern wave moving quicker than the southern wave is going to be substantial for the strength of this overall system. And here's why. That northern wave can't grab this cutoff and eject it quickly into this area because of the disconnect right here. And as a result, this is going to slow the system down, reducing the upper level wind shear support for a major, major severe weather outbreak. Okay, that's the meteorology behind this. Here's what I mean. This is now Wednesday morning. Can you see how the cutoff low is completely cut off from the trough that's now advanced here? So this flow is doing this while the cutoff low is still sitting and spinning in this area. So what I've done is I've, I've, I've reduced the wind speeds in the upper levels of the atmosphere in this target area on uh, Tuesday night and again on Wednesday night. And therefore, I've, I've, uh, this will reduce the potential extent of the severe weather. Doesn't mean we still won't get some strong to severe thunderstorms, but this is a good trend overall. I, I'm quite happy to see that. So what has it done? Look, look at the low level uh, jet right in through here where we were talking about having a low level jet that might get up to 70 plus miles an hour. The latest forecast for Tuesday evening. And again, it still targets this area for severe weather. But now we're talking about a low level jet that may be 30 to 50 knots rather than 50 to 80 knots. So that's that's what's substantial about this. OK, so let's now take a look at what's going on. This starts us off Friday at six o'clock in the morning. Let's step back and just see it again. So we see have we have the clippers coming through right in through there hitting that region we've already discussed and then high pressure takes over. So this is the cool start to our weekend. But remember, the flow around high pressure cells is clockwise. So the warmth begins out west first. And here we go. This is now Sunday afternoon and evening. Now, just remember, we have one trough digging in through here and the second one pulling in through there. So see that low pressure system? That's the one up here in Canada that as it moves toward, well, the Hudson Bay by Monday morning, it leaves our frontal boundary sitting right in through here while our cutoff low is still hanging out way back over here. So widespread scattered showers and thunderstorms in this corridor Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening into Monday morning. The high pressure cells feeding in the moisture. But this is connected to this low here, not the one that you see over here. So let's keep going. We notice Monday afternoon and evening getting into Tuesday morning right here. So that first system jets on over here and leaves a major frontal boundary lingering right in through this area. And look, the warm moist air starts to return and it's gonna ride that boundary as the next low forms. Now the significance is a southward shift in the heaviest precipitation region. Let me just step you back here. This is the first time I'm concerned right in through here for the potential for severe weather. And then as we move forward into Wednesday morning, afternoon and evening, I'm going to be concerned again from basically Louisiana, stretching all the way to Alabama and Georgia, right in through here for severe weather on Wednesday evening. That system moves out by the time we get to Thursday morning, afternoon and evening next week. And behind it, high pressure starts to come in. And that's where the real pattern change begins. So we need to talk about what that pattern change looks like here. First, showing you just now uh, week two precipitation. What we're going to be watching is for a trough to be developing 
with the axis of the main trough here. And if we do build in some ridging in this area, that could signal a drier week in week two. So this would be going from the following Friday, so next Friday, to the one after that. Now, that does not mean it's going to be completely dry because anytime we're discussing troughing in the western part of the United States, systems like to eject into the central plains and give us the chance for rainfall here. But this is at least a signal that looks drier than what I have seen for that region. Notice, though, how wet California is starting to get with this new pattern change. So here it is. Starting on, uh, you know, the, the 9th, we are seeing the ridge that we've been discussing so frequently in our updates slowly starting to shift back in this direction. Therefore, our main troughs are sitting here, and these are all connected. That gives us a warmer pattern for the southeast, but this is overall a, a pretty substantial change. Now, if you see this trough, I just put an X in, move over here setting up over Nevada, Utah, Arizona, that will go back over into a pattern that really lights up parts of, of the southeast. But as it stands, the current forecast through the middle of March is to keep that thing off of the, the, the southwest uh, corner of the United States. So what does it do in terms of temperatures? Well, this is day 5 through 10. So as that trough develops, the pattern relaxes and we warm up across a big section of the country. And this is day 10 through 15. Now the trough is fully established and the flow is doing this. And we continue on with our very mild conditions we've seen so far this winter. Longer term, and this is where we're going to finish this up. This is now looking from March 10th through April 10th. March 10th through April 10th. With the ridge backing up, the trough establishing here, we still have the influence of the subtropical jet stream, but do notice that we've backed off on the heavy, heavy precipitation amounts in that part of the country that we just discussed at the beginning of this video that was so wet. But one thing is for sure, with the main trough axis sitting back here, it does appear that we are going to go into a very mild pattern as we get through the month of March and into the beginning of April. So early spring is certainly on its way, and many people down, I think, that are in the south and south, in fact, the eastern half of the country are going to think the groundhog's a genius. Uh, but remember, that animal has no predictive skill. This is all because of a ridge that's backing up into the Aleutian Islands. All right, we're going to wrap it up right there. Hope you all have a great weekend. We'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you.